Buying a good smartphone with good camera quality is now as important to most people, if not everyone, as having a good battery life on your smartphone also these days. Last thing you wanna do is buy a smartphone for over 500 pounds or sign up for a 24 month contract or more and not be able to use the camera to its full capabilities. The Samsung Galaxy S5 sports a 16 megapixel main camera and a two megapixel front with wide angle lens. So which means you can take selfies, pictures of your kids growing up, going out for a friend's birthday, for a meal, things like that. You wanna capture those moments. And the last thing you wanna do is look back to those pictures and think, well, I've missed those moments because I couldn't really use the camera. I didn't know what to press and what to do on it. So this video uh, aims to give you a good insight, a detailed insight into the camera interface on the Samsung Galaxy S5, as well as towards the end, show you some uh, samples. So for example, you can do 4K recording video. So I'm gonna give you a sample of the 4K recording capability of the Samsung Galaxy S5 right at the end. So stay tuned all the way throughout the video. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we're gonna go through the camera interface and see what's new, the settings, and how to operate it, how to get the most, make the most out of your Samsung Galaxy S5 camera. So without further ado, I'm Tommy, you're watching Gadgets Boy, let's take a look. The Samsung Galaxy S5 cameras offers high quality imaging, fast autofocus, HDR images, and HDR mode as well in videos. Tapping into settings offer more options to help you make most out of your Samsung Galaxy S5 camera. The HDR mode can be turned on and off in both photo and video mode. It offers brighter and vivid images, especially when there is counter light or when the subject is shaded. It can preview in real time the natural light and color being reproduced vividly and clearly while taking your shot. Let's take a look into the settings and see what it's all about. In settings, you can change the picture size, offering you options for 16 megapixel all the way down to 2.4 megapixel. And that's all at various aspect ratios. I tend to leave mine at 16 megapixel as a fill. Most of the time I've got enough memory anyway in my phone to store 16 megapixel photos in HDR mode or standard mode. Most people take it off 16 megapixel uh, to save space on the memory or maybe they're sending it via MMS. The camera also offers burst shots so you can take up to 30 shots rapidly. In fact, it does around one shot every 0.3 seconds. You can even use HDR mode in burst mode. Next is picture stabilization. This allows you to take brighter and clearer pictures by automatically detecting low light and adjusting the camera accordingly. In this mode, the ISO settings becomes unavailable. You also get face detection. So when taking group photos, for example, the smiles and faces are detected, which can be really great for better focus. The ISO settings is something that would be familiar with you guys who are into your photography. It allows you to adjust the camera sensitivity to the light. So for example, higher ratings will be used in low light situations, but be careful, the higher the ISO, the more noisy and grainy your images become. Metering mode determines how the camera measures the brightness of the subject. He assesses the amount of light available for the photograph and then adjusting the exposure accordingly. So you have options, well, three options here. You'd use the matrix when you're not sure about the exposure, so you just leave it there. So it's sort of like automatic, if you want to think about it that way. Spot metering can be used when you have a backlit subject and center weighted uh, takes the center into consideration, but also takes the surrounding portions of the shot into consideration. You have the option to tap on the screen to take pictures, which can make life easier if you use the main camera for taking selfies, for example. With selective focus, you can make objects stand out from the background and create knife depth of field or bokeh shots. You have to follow the instruction or practice till you get it how it works perfectly for the best selective focus because you have to have a certain amount of distance between the subject, the background and yourself. So you have to have the middle ground. Using this mode disables ISO, picture stabilization, burst shots, effects, flash, and HDR. Next is the video size. This is similar to the photo size in that it allows you to select what video quality you require. Here you can go up to UHD, also known as 4K videos. Using UHD mode would disable dual camera mode, HDR, video effect, remote viewfinder, and taking pictures while recording. In recording mode, you can have it in normal, limit the size for transfer over MMS, slow motion, fast motion, and smooth motion. And just like taking pictures, you can also add video stabilization. For those who are really into using a smartphone for recording somewhat professional videos, audio zoom might be important to you. This will improve the audio from the subject. So when you zoom in on this object, it gets rid of surround sounds, which is brilliant. Other settings include effects for adding filters, flash on and off, settings for timer for self-timing shots, 
location tags, changing the storage location, review pictures or videos after they're taken, remote viewfinder, white balance settings, exposure settings, grid lines for better composition, and voice control. Camera mode is where Samsung made some changes also. So rather than having all those extra modes that you don't really need or probably will never use like the Galaxy S4, they've included few modes. You have auto mode, beauty face, which helps you get rid of those uh, facial imperfections. You have shot and more for dramatic shots, panorama, virtual tour, dual camera. And if you hit the download option, this will take you to the Samsung app store so you can download a couple of more modes if you like, like the sport mode, for example. Virtual shot though is something that's new. You can create virtual tours of locations. So if you're a, an estate agent, for example, you can create a virtual tour of the house or apartment that you're about to sell. The front facing camera only gives you the option for beauty face, which can be adjusted to user preferences. So you can use it to completely smooth your face or you can just leave it as normal and not use it at all. So as you can see, you have loads of tools available for you to use and settings and things that you can tweak to make most out of your Samsung Galaxy S5 camera. So what I'll do is uh, there's a link below for you guys to check out for Samsung Galaxy S5's 4K recording from the main camera, the front facing camera sample, and a couple of shots that I took with the camera while I, was, while I was out as well, just so you guys can get a feel for what you can do with the Samsung Galaxy S5 camera. In the meantime, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do subscribe for more content. I'm Tommy, you guys are watching Gadgets Boy. Catch you in the next one.